what a trip. We've been on the road for over a week now, but it all started on a smoky Sydney's day when we picked up our juicy V8 Ram, loaded it to the brim with fishing gear and bombed it down the highway to Warrnambool. This is where we raided Richardson Marine's Tackle Shack. Now, it's every fisherman's dream to have one minute alone in a tackle store and take whatever you want. And we're having a few beers with Ed Richardson, owner of Richardson Marine, and he said he'd be able to make our dreams come true. But anyway, we're here now, we're in the store. I've already started eyeing up a few things, but he's given us some rules to work with. So firstly, 60 seconds only. Secondly, we've got a thousand dollar limit, which is fair enough. And third, he's got his uh, tackle store goons here to lay down one penalty play so they can do whatever they want. They can take an item back, they can block me, but one time only, so I hope they use that one right. Anyway, tackle shop is calling, let's do it. On your marks, get set, go! I'm off. Oh shit! Roadblock already. You have to do it to a three-point turn. This is a horrible start. Oh no. Oh, shit. Stick baits first, I reckon. Oh, there's one straight in. So Scotty reckons there's been a few kingies around at the moment, so we're gonna need stick baits. Lots and lots of stick baits. Alright, time to move on. Now the smart money would to be to stack up on this Garmin gear, but yeah, nah, no Garmin, fuck that. <laughs> now this baby is a Miller rod. I reckon it's worth about 500 bucks. It might blow the budget. Oh shit! <laughs> oh no! Some black magic hooks, I reckon. Some of these. Suicide snapper. Some good little whiting hooks. Soft plastics. Have a look at these babies, these chase baits. Oh yes. One of every animal. <laughs> Got some uh, whiting packs here. Scotty reckons these whiting are going to be going off. Let's keep moving to the... Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, no. All right. I know this is the moment you boys have been dreading, but I'd like access to the real cabinet, please. Two Saragosas, thanks. All yours. <laughs> thanks, mate. Ooh, a bit of three pound for the whiting. A bit of 60 for the kings. I reckon that's time. One minute, we're done. Let's see what the damage is. 3,411 and 10 cents. Ooh, I guess I'll go get my credit card. I'm out of here with <laughs> my trolley. From there, we filled the truck's ram boxes with Ed's signature shaved ice. This stuff is so bloody good that one bag almost lasted us for the whole trip. It's made with 5% salt water, so it stays freezing cold for much longer than servo ice. Oh, and if you're wondering, the ram boxes actually have bungs in the bottom, so once the ice melts, we're easily able to drain them out. The next day we went out of Port Ferry, convoy style with longtime buddy, Scotty Gray. The weather was absolutely shithouse, so we stayed in close and chased King George Whiting. After around three hours and about 300 rouse, we finally got into the whiting. <laughs> How's that for a whiting? Look at the size of him! A snapper and even a cray. But as usual, Scotty outfished us substantially. After that awesome little session, it was time to hit the beach and see what we could wrangle up for dinner. Welcome to the captain's cooking show. Nah, I'm just talking shit. The captain does not have a cooking show and it probably never will. And there's a very good reason for that. We're all shit cooks, except for Miguel. Anyway, as you would have seen yesterday, we went out and caught a few whiting out off Port Ferry. And they say that you can't fuck up cooking a whiting. And today we're going to put that theory to the test. We've got a pretty good setup down here though. We've got the Weber, we've got the Otterbox. And we're going to try out a little recipe that we saw over in Western Australia with crayfish. And that's crayfish tacos. So we're going to do whiting tacos today. We ran down for local IGA. We've got limes, we've got lemons, we've got avocados. We are ready for action. We're going to do a little bit of a guacamole first, a nice chunky guacamole um, with some big red onion. And then we'll put the, uh, the whiting onto the grill with a bit of panko crumbs, a little bit of butter, and finish it off with a bit of cheese, a bit of salsa, a bit of tomato. Hopefully, there's nothing that can go too wrong here, so we should be right. Then we'll just have a little fish and gobble up our dinner over the open fire. We continued west to the tuna capital of Victoria. Actually, probably the tuna capital of Australia, Portland. 
he would be chasing, uh, yeah, flathead. Uh, don't know how that happened, but we were fishing with two young guns, Jonty, who's a mechanic, and Lockie, who's a sparky. So we feel pretty much invincible as we head out to the flatty grounds. What the boys didn't tell us though, was that the flatty grounds were in a hundred meters of water off Bridgewater. It was blowing 20 knots straight on the nose, but the 2250 lapped it up. And after an hour of traveling, we'd finally arrived at the flatty grounds. We've traveled less distance for Marlin, so we're hoping it was a bloody good spot. With enough flatty fillets to power a small fish and chip shop for a Sunday night, we decided to set our eyes on a new quarry, abalone. We didn't have any dive gear though, so we got on the blower to Jonty and Lockie's mate, Mason, who hand delivered us a wetsuit, mask and fins. Thanks mate. We then jumped into the icy blue water and plucked some black-lipped abs from some incredible country. On our last day, we cruised around Lady Julia Percy Island and tried for a king, but all we could find was about 1,000 seals. Still, it was a bloody beautiful place. The new Stabycraft 2250 Ultra Senecab is one seriously versatile rig. We fished for Chinook salmon up a river in Oregon in the USA aboard one of these, and they feel just at home there as they do off Portland in 100 meters of water with 20 knot wind and a three meter swell. Staby have done an awesome job designing a boat that offers a spacious walk around while still offering a massive cab, big enough for four big dudes and all our camera gear. Now another awesome thing about this bow section, the walk around, it's got a little elevated platform right at the front here and you can actually fish right to the edge and feel totally safe because the bow rail just sits perfectly under your knees there. This thing is awesome. Features on this demo rig from Richardson Marine include a banging fusion sound system, trick Garmin setup with one kilowatt transducer and a radar, the V-berth extension, deck wash, more lights than a Melbourne nightclub and the list just keeps going. There's a huge 300 litre fuel tank that pairs nicely with a punchy 300 horsepower Suzuki. We had the foam filled hull humming along at 40 knots. Tow weight is around the two and a half ton mark and we didn't even know it was there with the dram pulling her along. As we've said before, we bloody love the forward raking windscreen design and we reckon a lot more trailer boats will be adopting this configuration. Price wise, you'd be surprised to hear that you can get this whole rig truck and boat for around 300 grand as tested as you see it today. If you went to the base level truck and a standard stabby, you could do it for around 210 grand. Now that's a bloody bargain. We had an epic time touring around the Southwest and we couldn't think of any better rig to do it in than the 2250. Pinky Snapper and King George Whiting, name a more iconic Victorian duo. 